Good day, my name is Kornay van Westhuizen. I'm panelist agronomist for Northwest Province. Today the focus is on Sclerotinia stemonet rot in sunflower. As general background, Sclerotinia is considered worldwide as one of the most prevalent uh, diseases. Sclerotinia is a fungal disease that infects sunflower. It causes Sclerotinia head rot, stem rot and root rot in sunflower specifically. It occurs on most type or on all soil types and is seasonal in nature. It has more than 300 hosts and uh, it's very specific in terms of infection in sunflower, uh, in terms of weather conditions, uh, which kind of infection you will get. Sclerotina infection in sunflower can uh, occur in two ways. Firstly, we have asexual phase, which is a mycelium which infects uh, the root system of, of sunflower. The second phase of infection is a sexual phase in which uh, you get head rot due to spores that's being formed. The first form, the asexual phase, wilting due to mycelium growth, is basically caused by the overwintering body, the sclerotia, that survives in the soil. Developing roots from a host plant that uh, grows in the vicinity of uh, uh, sclerotia will stimulate the sclerotia to germinate. That sclerotia will basically send out a mycelium that will intersect and infect the root and the infection will grow up into the stem of a, of a sunflower and cause a, a cancer type growth in, in the stem basis. At the stem it will also form mycelia that will grow uh, on the roots and unfortunately a healthy plant that the roots crosses that of, of a diseased plant can get infected as well. Sclerotina root rot can be identified as one or a couple of individual plants that quickly dies down overnight due to the root system being compromised. Uh, fortunately, the plants desiccate quickly and uh, doesn't spread the disease over a large area during the combined process. The second type of sclerotina infection that you get is the sexual phase. This is where head rot occurs due to sporulation or spore infection. The same sclerotia that in overwinters, basically under specific environmental conditions, will form a petisium, which is a, a mushroom, which will basically uh, uh, release spores into atmosphere. The environmental conditions that's very specific to this is cool, wet weather for a prolonged period will stimulate that uh, mushroom development. Uh, cool, wet weather conditions are necessary for the spores to, to be blown around with the wind. Senescent material on the pollinating flower will basically serve as the in, initial uh, uh, infection point in which the plant will be infected. So in, in terms of sunflower, infection basically will take place during the R5 phase of plant development. You will only see the end result a bit later on at the end of R6, when the, the head of the sunflower will basically start to collapse you will see that wet uh, uh, disease forming on, on it. The front end of a flower will fall out in terms of the seed and you will see that sclerotia uh, bodies in the sunflower head. The spread of sunflower in your area and on your farm can, be done, can happen in a number of ways. Firstly, implements that's not cleaned properly, specifically combines that move from one field to another or between farms can spread sclerotia over a vast area uh, or over long distances. Secondly, water flow or wind can spread diseased material from one field to another. As mentioned previously, spores formed during the, the head rot phase can basically be blown around through different fields. And lastly, poorly cleaned seed, especially when it comes to farm kept seed that's being processed on the farm can carry over uh, quite a number of sclerotia from one field to another. Sclerotina control is very difficult since there's not one control mechanism that is 100% effective in preventing sclerotinia. Basically, an integrated approach will be needed with a lot of different mechanisms that you need to implement to try to mitigate the risk of sclerotinia. Firstly, we must try to control the leaf canopy. By that, we mean the microclimate within the field you can definitely have a look at row width. By increasing it, you can get better wind uh, movement through the field, better sunlight penetration into the field. Everything is focused solely 
towards reducing the humidity and increasing the temperature to prevent uh, the, the sporulation of the spores. You can have a look at plant population, of course, reduce the canopy effect with lower plant population, and also have a look at fertilizer. Do not over fertilize in terms of nitrogen. It will certainly stimulate excessive uh, vegetative growth and uh, contribute to the problem we have with, with a closed canopy. In terms of general plant nutrition, it's always important to, to fertilize NPK in relation to one another, according to your uh, uh, yield potential that you want to harvest. Very important, look at crop rotation as a management tool. Do not plant broadleaf crops, say soybean and sunflower as rotation. It's the same crop with a, a type of crop with the same risk. Soil cultivation can be used to manage the sclerotia carryover from one season to the next. Firstly, through no-till, you keep the sclerotia for as long as possible on the soil surface. Uh, it's exposed to different temperatures, different humidity, and will definitely have effect on the longevity of the sclerotia on the soil surface. Secondly, you can make use of plow tillage, for example, and you can bury the sclerotia in the soil where it's too deep for it to emerge and, and basically sporulate. Unfortunately, remember, if you plow again in the future, you will only bring up the sclerotia again to the soil surface. A very important aspect as well is weed management. We always tend to, to give attention to weed control in the field, but broadleaf weeds in general on the boundaries of the fields in your runoff water areas needs to be controlled as well to, to, to try to prevent the spread of the disease. Planting date, specifically to try to alter the flowering date, is one of the best management tools you as a farmer basically have to try to mitigate the risk of sclerotinia. Managing the disease triangle by managing the flowering period, you can mit mitigate the risk of sclerotinia. By making use of different planting dates, different hybrid lengths. You can basically make the sunflower flower over a longer period and reduce the risk of sclerotinia happening in a certain flowering uh, date specifically. Chemical and biological products can also be used to assist in the management of sclerotinia. The focus here specifically is to try to reduce the sclerotia carryover from one season to another or to prevent infection taking place. Firstly, you can make use of registered seed treatments to assist in sterilizing seed that possibly might have seed-borne sclerotia. These biological products are specifically uh, for controlling sclerotia by uh, feeding on it, reducing the sclerotia carryover from one season to another. Fungicides can be used to address overall plant health and by so doing you can address the possible uh, possibility of infection. In the undue case that infection did take place, you can try to desiccate the field and stop the spread of the disease in the field and try to reduce the amount of sclerotia that can be produced and, and shed on the field. It's very important to focus on the time on which you want to desiccate the field. By desiccating the field too early, you can significantly expect yield loss. The small table here indicates the percentage loss that you can expect at different growth stages if you experience hail, for example, and you have total uh, leaf loss. At the R5 stage, you will basically have almost 90% yield loss, R6, 80%, and only at maturity at R9, you basically won't, will have no yield loss. By focusing on the three photos, you can see clearly R6 stage, the Sunflower is still uh, green, and uh, at that stage you will have almost 80% yield loss. On the right hand side, we can see the back of a sunflower. It's a nice yellow color. That small triangle leaves all turn brown. At this stage, basically, the seed is mature on the head, and you can continue and desiccate it. Uh, what the desiccator will do is you will dry down the plant as quickly as possible and stop the disease from spreading further and taking more of that flower specifically. Thank you for taking time to look at this content. Get in touch with a sales representative if there's any questions and good luck with the season lying ahead.